We're very, very grateful that you've taken the time and energy. Thank you, Philip. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, been actually very uh, excited and looking forward to uh, being a part of this group. Um, hopefully to add just a little bit of something, a little bit of light. Uh, even if it's just one of you, then I've done my part. Um, so yeah, I am a, I am a, with the label of a life coach. Um, <clears throat> when I was uh, trying to figure out what it is that I do, that is kind of what I was directed to so people under, could understand. And um, I, I do have a, most of my emphasis is on spirituality and um, uh, getting people to understand that they are already spiritual and that um, a lot of us have just been through things in our life that have created certain blocks of energy within our system and um, it becomes for some of us hard to connect and to be open to a spiritual way of life. Um, so I will, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey into um, uh, my awakening um, spiritually and, uh, and just open to new experiences in this more of a quantum 5D um, experience in this lifetime. Um, at a young age, um, I would lay down in my bed and I would get these, um, they were somewhat uh, like a voice. I didn't understand what they were saying, but it almost sounded like, um, almost like a thousand voices at once. Um, at the time being a kid, not understanding, it was, a, it was a scary experience for me. And I didn't understand what the information was uh, or how to, um, discern anything at that age um so i would i would get very afraid and i would go lay down beside my parents bed just to feel safe and um, um so i would lay down and my parents had this long dresser along their bed where they kept all their clothes and they she had my mom had these um these handles on the dresser that would hang down <clears throat> and uh so i would lay down beside their bed and those handles would start to shake and uh, it was, and I remember my my father saying, "Quit that to me." And I wasn't I wasn't doing anything. Um, so I mean, at that point, it was like I, I didn't understand what was going on with me. Um, it, I've learned to um, actually tap into that information information and actually use it for um, to help other people and uh, help in my life. Um, now that I understand that there's more, more than what we see, uh, what we can feel and what we can touch. Um, but at the time, I mean, I got labeled as dyslexic and ADD and all these things because I, I, I always had a, a whole bunch of information going on um, that I didn't know what to do with. Um, so uh yeah that was kind of my my first experience but uh, my mother was a, a reiki healer and um you know so i would uh i would get sessions from my mother and i would have these experiences where i would see spirits and i would i would try and express what i was seeing um and my father was very um godless and uh he basically would say to my mother and I, what we do is a bunch of hocus pocus. Um, so, you know, and, and there was a lot of uh, communication break breakdown within my family. Um, expressing uh, honestly was not something that uh, happened very often. Um, being emotional didn't never, almost never happened. Communicating in an honest way usually never happened. My, my father would always say, don't tell your mother, don't tell your mother, don't tell your mother all, all my life. So, you know, for one, he was, he was shaping me into being a liar. And um, that in itself for me was uh, one of those blocks that started to happen because uh, for me, I mean, being spiritual, um, so much has to do with truth 
And um, that dishonesty that I was being programmed with at an early age was one of those blocks that was blocking me from who I truly was. Um, so, you know, that, that was kind of the starting point. And, uh, you know, I, I really had a hard, hard time in school. Um, like I said, uh, you know, as people are talking to me, I was actually getting information about their energy constantly. And I, I thought I was going schizophrenic, to be honest. Um, it was just something that I didn't know, know much about or what to do with. Um, and I actually, with, with that, with my guides and with this information, I can have a lot of fun with it today. I just didn't know how to do it back then. Um, so, uh, you know, trying to get through school was very, very painful, especially with not understanding how to protect myself from other people's energies and all these things. Uh, being in a classroom was like torture for me. Um, so I started to, I just started to act out. I would get kicked out of class on purpose just so I could just get away because it was such a relief to be able to walk out of the classroom and just be by myself. So, um, you know, grade nine, I was, uh, expelled from my school. I was, um, you know, uh, just smoking on the property and I did it intentionally. I wanted to get caught. Um, you know, so, and all throughout high school, I, I, I just basically, I hung out in the parking lot and I, and I tried to <clears throat> stay by myself as much as possible. Although I did, I did have a lot of friends and stuff. There were certain people that, um, you know, I had good relationships with and, um, but I, I just started hanging out with the wrong crowd and I can't explain why I was, I was in a sense looking for a father figure. I was looking for a brother. I grew up with sisters and all these things. I was looking for some sort of masculinity in my life and, and the, the so-called bad kids back then seemed to have that <clears throat> something that I was looking for. I can't really explain it today, but um, my parents divorced um, when I was 17. And, um, you know, I didn't do drugs, alcohol was, I didn't, I didn't really like it throughout high school. I was usually the designated driver. Um, but when my parents split up, uh, uh, my mother, I woke up one morning and she was packing and uh, I didn't see it coming because there was no communication or anything like that. So, and that, <clears throat> that, I don't know why it shook me to the core so bad. Um, but I think a lot of addiction, the people that I work with, um, there's usually some sort of trauma that, that triggers, um, that, and a lot of, some people are just born into trauma. A lot of uh, addicts and alcoholics, um, they, when they're in the room, in the womb, um, experience some kind of trauma, and they're they're literally just born into that. And uh, a lot of people don't have a fighting chance. And um, but mine was later in life. And uh, you know, I. I I got into drugs and alcohol very hard, very fast. It was a very good escape from this unbearable world, this unbearable society to me. Um, and uh, it took me to very, very dark places, very, very, um, you know, almost very traumatic places. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I struggled with that. From the time I was 17, I was in and out of treatment centers, uh, trying to find an answer. I was in and out of, um, I was in and out of counselors and psychologists, and I was in the psych ward. Um, my my basically, but from 17 to 25, my life consisted of uh, institutions. But uh, you know, I spent most of my time there, and if I wasn't, I was, I, I was so out of my mind um but there was a part of me that the like i i was never i was never bad i was never you know a criminal or anything like that there was a lot of goodness in me um i just didn't know how to operate uh with uh with what i was experiencing and the best way to just shut everything off was to um to to drink and, and use drugs and prescriptions and street drugs and, and just anything, anything that I could uh, get my hands on. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I, 
I stayed with my mother's friend when I was about 21 and she was a Reiki healer as well. And I spent two months with her and um, she taught me Reiki how to, how to, um, she started to teach me how to control my energy and, and all of these things. Um, but something happened and, and I don't know what happened. It was like that my, the ego part of me had a lot of resistance and I was very, very afraid to go down that path it almost felt like too much at the time and uh you know so I, I got very afraid and i ended up leaving and um going back to drugs and alcohol and uh you know that drugs and alcohol actually took me to a place of uh of homelessness i lived on the streets for six months and um you know it was just I just, I felt like I was never going to be able to, you know, go home and mow the lawn and have a house and kids and, and all the things that society told me that I'll, when I do that, I'll be fine. Um, it just didn't seem like I was ever going to be able to connect in that way or, or fit in in that way. And uh, I really, I had a lot of shame. And shame is a vibration that <clears throat> will keep, keep me from connecting to all that I am. And that is the one thing that, uh, that I really work with people, guilt and shame. Guilt, not necessarily as bad because guilt's an easy turnaround. It's, uh, it, it can almost be like the goodness in myself um, feels guilty for doing something out of character and that that can be an easy fix shame is a much deeper issue that um when it when i think that something is wrong with me that <clears throat> i think on the hawkins scale i think it's probably um just before just before death is shame so uh, you know i literally felt like the walking dead for a for a while and um you know i was 25 and i got into a 12-step program and I didn't understand that, uh, I didn't understand what the program was, was trying to do for me. Um, it, it shaped me to be okay enough to um, live in the material. Um, I don't know if I didn't put enough effort into what he was actually talking about. The, the man who wrote the 12 step program that was a major download in the 19 in the 1900 or 1935 and um the literature that he wrote actually is um you know it's saying the same thing any spiritual teaching is saying and it's all just a vehicle a vehicle to to a higher power or or god source whatever the label is and um you know so that was um but you know, I struggled again because I di I didn't really find, um, I didn't find the part of myself with that that was going to be okay enough to actually speak up and, and use the gifts that I've been given. Um, I was still trying to live in the material. I was, you know, I started a construction company and and I was really doing my best and I. I ended up having two kids with with my wife and um, and I was just trying to kind of be like the Joneses because that's what I was told I should be like. Um, but again, I was even without the drugs and alcohol, I, I thought I was going clinically insane, um, trying to fit into this pre programmed set of ideas and um, so it was a, it was a, a big struggle, but eventually um, I remember being down on my knees and just praying just for some sort of guidance, some sort of um, somebody just to help and, and just give me the guidance that I was, that I was so desperately needing. And uh, my prayer was answered and I met a, a fellow who actually showed me um, a process that I went through. It was a process of shadow work <clears throat> that uh, started to move that energy within me. Started to 
um, give me the ability to move from my head to my heart because part of my thing um, when, I, when I'm not connected is a very obsessive nature and um, a very controlling nature, not so much controlling people around me, but in my, in my thinking, I'm trying to control everything. And this man told me that that was a form of trying to play God, even though I wasn't uh, physically trying to actually control people. I was basically trying to run my own universe within myself. And uh, if I continue to do that, there will be no room for God. Um, so a major, major shift started to happen. I started to understand um, because my, I had such bad anxiety. My anxiety was so bad, it, it would, uh, I would lock myself in my apartment for, for days on end because um, my anxiety would get so bad, I would become actually paranoid. There was such a, a glitch in my system um, at that time. I, I just, uh, I couldn't figure out why. And he was the one who guided me into locating a part of myself and it was the, the dishonest part that I had been programmed by my father. Um, I, I was such a compulsive liar and a people pleaser. Um, I was so afraid of conflict. I was always trying to please everybody, but it was, uh, I wasn't doing it honestly and I wasn't doing it out of service. It was a form of selfishness that I didn't understand. Um, I, and it, it was also a form of fear that I didn't understand. I was just trying to make everybody like me all the time. And I was, um, you know, just trying to please everybody. And it was, a, it was a very dishonest way of living because, um, you know, when I say yes and I mean no, um, again, it's almost like another glitch that happens within my system. And, uh, you know, that connection cannot flow freely when I'm not being true to myself. So this, this way of honesty became a way of life for me. And um, I was honest in a way that I had never experienced before. It was very uncomfortable at first. I really, there were situations where the ego part of my mind was just creating a story to lie before it would happen. And I'm creating all these scenarios. I'm going to say this and he's going to say that. And then I'm going to say this and I'm going to say that. And I was creating this thing that was so far from the truth. And then as I practiced, I used to phone him when I was thinking about being dishonest. Because I could see how the dishonesty was actually the, the core reason of my anxiety. And uh, it was something that um, completely started to change within me where like today I can just be honest without any fear in any situation because I'm actually living from my heart but it just didn't I just didn't recognize it and it just went away like I'm not gonna be dishonest anymore but the biggest part was I was I was learning to be honest with myself first and once I started becoming honest with myself first then I I had no problem being honest with everybody around me. Um, so, I mean, that was a big turning point because um, I had to start to be honest with what I was experiencing as well. And I found that right person um, that had zero judgment, that had no opinion about what I was going through and it just turned out that this man had had similar experiences to me, or similar experiences that I had. And um, so just to have that, that person who understood, and he could literally tell, tell me things about myself because he had been through it. He um, was able to guide me into dealing with my so-called dyslexia but it wasn't dyslexia it was um it was just that information that was happening within me um i've i've learned to turn down the volume and be able to focus now 
So, I mean, they tried putting me on all kinds of medications and all that stuff. And it had nothing to do. It had nothing to do with needing to be on medication. Um, so this journey into uh, devoting just to help others, help others find the parts of themselves that are disconnecting them from their spirit. Um, I, I didn't even know what I was doing, to be honest. I was, because I was in the 12-step program, I was helping other addicts and alcoholics. And so I was coaching people for 10 years um, that way. And I, it, it had, I, I started to experience when I'm sitting down with somebody else, things were coming out of my mouth that I didn't even know. And I was tapping into this, this information about these people and I had no idea how I was doing it. But to let that energy out and, and not be afraid of it, everything changed within me. Um, and then I started to understand that um, the addiction was, it was a spiritual problem. A spiritual problem and that if I could get people to change their perception on some of these things that were going on with them some of these memories and some of these things that had happened to them um, that they were hanging on with fear or anger or shame and all these things if I could get them to change their perception on this thing that energy could start to flow and they could start to experience forgiveness for themselves and others and I didn't, I didn't mean to do any of this. It, it just started happening. Um, and so, uh, you know, about three years ago, I, I just kind of started getting guided. I didn't know anything about NLP, Neuro Linguistics Program. I didn't know anything about it. It was just something that kind of landed in my lap. Um, and it just gave me an ability to um, some, learn some new techniques to um, like a lot of it, I've learned a better way to gather information. That's a huge part that I, I, I've learned. And it just, um, when people are in a stuck state and they can't really move past it, it's basically a series of techniques that, you know, once I understand how they process or, uh, information, if it's auditory, kinesthetic or, or images, um, then I can build a better rapport with a person and um, kind of work with them on their level. Now this all, I don't necessarily sit down and just say I'm going to use NLP or, or I'm going to use heart math. Um, everything I do is, is through intuition now. And, um, you know, I've been able to really tap into this this uh, gift of, of information gathering that happens. And it, it's nothing I can see, t touch or, or feel, but um, it just, it just kind of starts to flow through me. And um, so all those, all those symptoms that I was experiencing, um, you know, the anxiety, the, the panic, um, through the work and the effort that I was able to put into it and, and just, really be open to uh, a new way of life and this new change and just say, I'm not going to go back to the way I was. And I was just really relentless about it. And um, I don't go through a day without conscious prayer, meditation. And, um, you know, the heart math, the heart math is, um, when I certified in heart math, again, it was just kind of something that showed up and, and, um, I started using myself and again this uh the heart the heart math techniques have given me the ability to really just um amazing for discernment um a lot of people i've noticed that i work with we are just flooded with overload of information right now and people are becoming almost addicted to the what's next what's next what's next and making other people's truth their truth 
And I know from my experience, when I try and make somebody else's truth, my truth, and it doesn't line up, then I have this disconnect and I can easily fall into fear if it's being projected at me. I can easily absorb these energies that are actually coming through the screen. And I don't, when I say energies coming through the screen, the people making the articles or the people making the videos, I, I'm not saying that they're projecting bad energies, but when you have hundreds of thousands or millions of people projecting their fear into this energy or their, their worry and all these things, and then I pick up my phone and I, and I've just, this is only my experience. Um, I can feel all that, that panic and that anxiety coming off of this. Um, so I've, I'm really guiding people into um, the heart math is amazing for discernment and, and just protecting your own energy. Um, I have like a process that I go through. Like I love the videos. I love all the information everybody's doing and I don't shy away from it, but I have a process that I do with meditation and heart breathing before I go into the information because I need to, I need to be able to uh, protect my energy from everything that's happening right now. And it's very easy for me to, to absorb everything that's happening. And a lot of people, I think, it, I don't know, um, it may not be for everybody that way, um, but I, I know a lot of people are, are getting influenced in a way that they, they don't understand. And, um, you know, so we don't need to live in, in fear. We don't need to live in anxiety or anything like that. Um, fear and anger are absolutely wonderful tools. Like uh, if I think of a, when I see a rabbit and it looks at me and I go towards it and it runs away and then it goes back to its natural state, it is a very, very fleeting state, but it, it protects us. Or maybe it stops me from getting hit by a car or something like this. But it should just be short-lived and, and, and not something that we live in by any means. Um, so it's things like this where I'm, <clears throat> I'm just trying to reel people in so that they understand that everything that you take in today, you have to make sure that it's yours. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't make you feel good, then you need to find a way to, to get rid of that. Because um, <clears throat> Many of you know there is like, it feels like a, like a fight and a battle, but um, the more people awaken their spirits, the more we meditate and prayer. Um, and I'll share with you some, some heart math uh, videos here in a minute. Um, but yeah, I would just say that um, we have to be like almost hyper aware of what what we're taking in right now, it's almost like a, a subconscious diet. You know, yeah, like when I think of what I'm putting in my body, I'm very aware of, you know, things that are full of chemicals or, you know, things that are full of things that aren't good for my body. I have to think of that as the information I'm taking in as well. Um, is, it, is it good for my subconscious diet? You know, my subconscious well being. Um, is it going to serve good for me to, to take in this information? And I'm just very sensitive to that so I can easily sense what, what's happening um, with that kind of stuff. So, I mean, um, yeah. And, and, you know, part of the NLP that I do is um, just locating where this, I'd like to say, um, some of these uh, energies are, are located within the body, mind, and spirit. And it's a very um, useful when I'm using it, actually, because um, combined with the intuitive process, um, I can actually use these techniques to bring people in and, and actually locate these energies, and we can start to move them um, within ourselves. So um, I, would, I would just like to... Uh, I'm gonna share with you um, a little bit of the uh, science. Um, it's a 
it's a great video. I think it's about nine minutes long. Um, I may chat for a little bit <clears throat> after that. We can do a breathing technique all together as a collective. And then I do have one more video that I think is um, uh, necessary to show. And it's about 14 minutes long. So I'll do that now. Yes, your biological heart is doing more than you may have imagined. In recent years, neurocardiologists have made an exciting discovery. They found that the heart has its own independent nervous system. This complex system is referred to as the brain in the heart. It sends signals to the brain that are transmitted to the amygdala, the emotional processing center, to the thalamus, which synchronizes our cortical functions and affect our higher brain centers that are responsible for clarity of thought and decision-making. The brain also sends signals to the heart, mostly to raise or lower our heart rate. But when researchers look at the information traffic in the body, it's clearly seen that the heart sends a lot more information to the brain than it receives. Brain function is critically dependent on this information. Heart and brain are in constant communication. The heart is doing most of the talking. Here's another interesting scientific fact. The heart is an electrical organ, producing by far the strongest source of rhythmic bioelectricity. This energy goes to every cell in your body. Your heart produces enough electrical energy to create a magnetic field surrounding your body in 360 degrees, extending beyond the skin out into space, measurable about three feet outside your body. Magnetic fields contain information. We imprint our own magnetic field through what we're actually feeling, the emotions you're feeling. But then it gets even more interesting. It's like your know, magnetic fields relate to one another. They exchange information. So how is my field affecting your field right now and your field affecting mine? And a great analogy for this is cell phones. The way this works is their phone is generating an electromagnetic field in this case. And it's the magnetic field is carrying that information or voice right, or the photo or the text message, whatever. So when I talk about the magnetic field of the heart, it's the same thing. So we can uh, fairly easily measure that not only are we radiating these magnetic fields, but our nervous system are tuned to these fields and receive information from others. So what this means is that there's a very real energetic or magnetic communication system going on between people all the time. And another part of the reason I think the understanding the energetic communication that goes on between people is so important is in miscommunication. One of the uh, greatest sources of stress between people is when we're, we might be saying one thing, but our field is saying something else. And that leaves them with a disconnect or a confusion because our word said one thing, but we might have been sending another signal through our energetic system. When our heart, brain, body communication is working well, we can enter a state of being in sync with ourselves, a state of higher coherence. So what is coherence and why is this important? Coherence is a healthy, measurable state. The term refers to the cooperative alignment between heart, mind, and emotions. Higher coherence is good for us. It's a healthy state that regenerates us. It directly contributes to increased emotional balance, stability, access to intuition, and improved mental functions, such as the ability to focus, mental clarity, bigger picture thinking, memory, improved reaction times, and coordination. Coherence is often triggered by an experience of regenerative uplifting emotions, like those long associated with the qualities of the heart, such as love, care, kindness, appreciation, and compassion. And it helps us generate more of these heart qualities. 
Coherence can be measured using technology that measures the beat-to-beat -beat changes in the rhythmic beating patterns of the heart, like HeartMath's Inner Balance Trainer. This is called heart rate variability analysis. It's a measure of the naturally occurring beat-to-beat -beat changes in heart rhythm. It serves as a critical method for gauging human health. Coherence is a, a broad term in that it embraces many things, um, like synchronization, entrainment, a lot of other terms that we use in physics. But coherence always implies that the parts of a system, like our, within our body, for example, are communicating, it has to be communication, and that those subsystems from different parts of our body are working together in a harmonious and energy efficient way. Well, coherence is, is something that's called actually medically psychophysiological coherence, which means it's both physical and it's psychological. Physically, what's happening when we're in a high coherent state is all the major body systems are synchronized to an ordered rhythmic beating pattern of the heart. That's things like respiration, digestion, immune system response, hormonal response, and brain function. They all sync up. And when that happens, it's a very healthy state. And it's also a high performance state. You know, all the systems are working together well. Less energy is being wasted. Reaction speed times improve. Visual field changes. All that happens when we live in this high coherent state. So that improves not only our mental functions, but also our autonomic nervous system, which controls 90% of the body's involuntary functions from hormonal to immune. We have no sound. Coherence. Incoherent heart rhythms created by our emotional responses start to shut down some of our higher thinking capacities. This can cloud our judgment, ability to discern and make good choices. Sustained regenerative emotions create a smooth and ordered pattern which indicates high coherence. When people are feeling sincere, regenerative heart-based emotions, such as love, appreciation, and compassion, their heart rhythm pattern naturally becomes more coherent. These coherent heart rhythms send signals to the brain that open up our higher brain functions. We get smarter. You see, your brain is a big winner when we're coherent. Practicing heart coherence for even a few minutes lifts your vibration, making it possible for your heart's intuition to inform your attitudes, discernments, and choices. You don't have to walk around in perfect coherence. The carryover effect gives you enough operational coherence to support balance, emotional poise, and flow in your day-to-day -day communications and activities. You can reboot using a heart coherence technique anytime your energy starts to drop during the day. Through this experience, you will learn how to shift from incoherence to coherence and gain better health, mental clarity, and the ability to feel better emotionally. It's not as hard as you might think. And in the next chapter, you will learn a simple technique that will help you make this shift anytime, anywhere. Now, let's experience more heart connection. Okay, so yeah, that's um, 
a little bit of the science behind heart math and why it was like uh, when I actually looked into heart math, it was confirming a lot of the things that I are, was already aware of just on my own. And um, so I was really attracted to the, the heart math because it's not always easy when people are open-minded to, um, you know, a spiritual way of life, it's easy to talk about uh, many subjects, but some people that I, um, that I sit down with are, are not open to any spiritual or anything like that. So it was important for me to be able to explain to people how, how much more the heart has to do with everything we do. Um, rather than just pumping blood basically. And um, the, what I notice is when I actually bring people into a coherent state, they actually just become naturally uh, more open to a spiritual way of life. So um, <clears throat> basically we are going to, oh, I wanted to mention, so they talk, I just thought it was funny because they talk about the, uh, the heart radiance being about three feet <laughs> and it just made me laugh when we have to stay six feet apart. <clears throat> Was that calculated or what? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so basically, we're going to do what's called the lock-in technique. And heart-focused breathing is very, very simple. Um, basically, we're going to close our eyes. We're going to uh, breathe longer and slower than we normally do. We're going to visualize the breath going in and out of our heart. And then what we're going to do is we're going to recreate a positive emotion. And in heart math, we actually call it a renewing emotion. Um, same NLP and heart math do not use negative and positives. Um, heart math is renewing or depleting emotion. So we're going to visualize our breath going in and out through our heart and we're gonna bring back a memory or emotion that brought us joy that brought us love that brought us appreciation and the the heart lock-in is as we're breathing we bring that we bring that emotion into our heart and we sit with that and we try and experience it for a few minutes and this is not a 45 minute meditation or anything. This is something that can be used throughout the day at any time. The heart focused breathing I do while I'm driving. Um, you know, I can use it actually in a meeting. If I'm in a meeting with a, a number amount of people, then I can actually just do 20 seconds of, of um, heart focused breathing. Okay, so let's begin. We can close our eyes. You can leave your, leave your eyes open or close whatever you like. Um, for those of you who uh, maybe have some chatter in your mind, it's totally okay. If you need to um, just put your hand on your heart to put your attention on your heart, then um, for some people that works a little bit better. So if you fight, feel your mind is wandering, you can put your hand on your heart. It usually will bring your attention back to your heart center. So let's close our eyes and we'll just We'll just take long, deeper breaths than we normally would. You can breathe through your belly, but your attention wants to be, will be on your heart. And just visualize your breath entering and exiting your heart center as you breathe in and out. Now just think of a situation or a time in your life that brought you joy, appreciation, happiness. It can be a hug from a child, 
a birthday party, Christmas morning, anything that you can think of that really sparks joy and is easy to hold in your heart. Let's bring that into our breathing and into our heart center now. As you'll start to notice that joy, happiness, care, or compassion is now resonating through your heart, all throughout your nervous system, up to your mind, filling your entire being with joy and happiness. Feel the radiation of that joy and happiness. Enter into your aura, covering your entire aura with joy, happiness, care, and compassion. Feel the resonation from your heart and the connection of your whole being, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. All parts of your being, your RNA, DNA, nervous system, subconscious, superconscious, and higher self have identified this feeling. And you can tap into this feeling at any time of any day of any moment. Welcome to your natural state of being. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, keeping this sense of feeling emotion, keeping it wherever it needs to be. So that is what um, in heart math, what is called the lock-in technique. There's five other techniques that, that are used. Um, and they are just extremely useful. I use them before and uh, after all sessions. Um, I have a series of videos that, that I'm showing you parts of um, the videos, but I have all my clients watch watch the series of videos throughout our our time together, just so that they're they understand the science and. Um, you know, anything that fits for them, there's going to be something for everybody in the series of videos. Um, <clears throat> whether it's you have a very analytical mind or you're very spiritual or whatever, you, know, you just can't, uh, you, you can't really argue what, what they're saying in the videos because um, <clears throat> they back it with science and, and the spiritual part. So it's very, very useful for me and, um, you know, uh, my clients. So, um, 
And the other thing is with this, um, like I said, um, you can use this in, in traffic, you can use this, um, you know, at any time of the day, really. And just to be in that coherent state, I have um, actually technology that um, reads the heart rate variability and, um, and, and it don't, the whole purpose of the technology is to actually show people that their, that their physical body is changing because they can actually see it on the screen is also really amazing. I have people come in with brutal anxiety, depression, and um, these kind of techniques. They're so simple. It doesn't require any chanting or any, you know, hour meditations, although those are wonderful too. But for people that um, are in a in a state where they're very incoherent it's hard to it's hard to meditate it's hard to you know do these kinds of things even just sitting still can be a task sometime but uh, um, so yeah I mean and I also I use this with my kids I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old um, and I on on my program they actually have little kids kids games so when they when they breathe there's a little thing on the screen where if they copy the breathing that uh, they would get points and stuff like that. So, and I'm actually watching my kids change drastically um, with their patience level, with their attention level, all because of this heart focused breathing. And it, it is, it, it seems so s simple that it almost seems silly, but it, it's, uh, it's really, I'm actually, the other thing they describe is that um, by changing our heart and, and, and connecting to our heart, we're actually changing our environment. And it's so true because I especially watch it with my little guys who used to just fight like cats and dogs all the time. Um, I'm, I'm watching the, them be kinder to each other. Um, they're communicating better. And, uh, you know, so I, I feel very blessed that um, I was able to share this with you guys. So I hope you use these techniques. And um, the other thing that um, if, if you guys want any more information or you want other videos, um, please reach out and I'll, I'll, I'll give you whatever that you're looking for. Um, if you want to actually do a session, I'm uh, offering free sessions. Uh, the first, first session will be free for any CC member. Um, and then I, I'm also going to offer a, a donation because I know especially during these times, um, people uh, financially, you know, it can be very troublesome for some people. So first session is free. And then after that, it's just by donation. So whatever, whatever you feel that um, um, is worth to you or what you can afford or whatever. And if you know anybody that, you know, you feel that is struggling um, and you let me know that they're a member, like a family member or a friend and you're a CC member, I'll, I'll, I'll honor the same system for them as well. Um, and then, uh, of course, there is a lot of information on the, um, the HeartMath website. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. There's a lot of cool technology that's inexpensive. You can actually, um, they have ones that are just for your phone and, and very simple stuff as well. So there is one, um, one more video I would like to share with you because it has to do with global coherence. And it is very similar to collective consciousness, um, what we're doing here. So I think it is very fitting. So I will do that now. Oh, hang on. You've been learning to make a deeper connection with your heart and increase coherence. Now, let's explore what could be possible as more and more people make a connection with their heart's intelligence and then come together in cooperative ways. It's an adventure, discovering the power of the heart of humanity. 
Rather than separation and discord, we can create a heart-based movement of increased heart qualities, such as compassion, empathy, and connection, leading to more coherence in society. Heart connection is on the rise because people are yearning for it. It is true that there are competing agendas in today's world, yet there is plenty of hopeful news to consider in the midst of the stress and chaos. It's a process of a new world birthing itself in the midst of the old one. Awareness is shifting. People are changing. Society is transforming. What we call social coherence is on the rise. Social coherence has to do with the relationships amongst the members of any group. So this could be a family, could be a work team, a whole company, or even cities, even countries, ultimately. Coherence has to do with how harmonious are the relationships amongst the parts. So in this case, say a family would be the whole family. How well are the, the members in that family or that work team getting along with each other? Ultimately, it really relates to the emotional connections between people. And this allows for good communication and cohesion of the collective action at the family or group level uh, when we're more coherent. What's uh, really interesting from a research perspective is there's multiple different types of studies now that are indicating that when people are in a group and they form emotional relationships, that this actually creates an energetic field of sorts amongst that group, which is really interesting because it means that information can be shared amongst the group members at an unseen and unconscious level. We were 54 people and we met to set a new Brazilian record, uh, building a, a formation during free fall. And um, it, this usually takes about a week. So we spend a few days together, um, making a few attempts. And all the athletes uh, have all the skills to actually make the record happen. But in the first couple of days of attempts, uh, we were not quite getting together in free fall. There was a little bit of um, uh, rush and some stress and people were not really getting in sync. And in the third day, uh, I was feeling that this kind of feel. We were we weren't in, uh, in sync. So you, you, we are ready to go. We are going to their plan and then I can Oh, everybody, hey, 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 hey. stop. <laughs> and then all people look to me, what's going on? I mean, come on, come on. And everybody stands uh, uh, in front of me. And then I use one technique that we learn here with heart map, with coheres for five, six minutes. And then when I felt the field, the energetic field was kind of quiet. And then I felt, okay, we are ready to go. Coincidence or not, that jump, we made it. We, we, made it. we broke the record. Yeah, we broke yeah. it. Amazing. Yeah. And the, the cool thing about it is that we could feel it in yeah. the air, yeah. the quietness. And when we landed, like a, a bunch of people, like they didn't really know what we, what Andre did, but they said to us, like, how oh, we could feel the quietness, and we were in ease, in flow, in flow. And it was, was kind of slow mo. It's perfect. And those electromagnetic fields being created, produced by the heart. When you choose to get into your purpose and create a coherent signal, it changes the environment. And so what happens is, is someone who is sitting and they're having a really bad day, or that you might notice that they're super sad or they're feeling dense, is your literal broadcast of the heart can help uplift them. And what happens is it creates this beacon of hope. It creates this almost a sense for others like, hey, this is possible. We need to rely on each other now more than ever. We need to open our hearts to each other. We need to approach these situations with everyone's collective interest in mind, not just our own as the individual, not just our own as a part of a group or even a nation. We are a collective consciousness and we need to start acting like it. And that is where I find hope. Coming from a 30 year law enforcement background, I've seen every 
kind of type of violence there is out there. And I would love to see a world with less or no violence in it. I know that may sound like a pipe dream, but I think it's possible. Commit to changing ourselves, have that emotional self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think that will ripple out to the world in a profound way to help see those changes come about. So the potential of social coherence, once we understand the physiology for the individual, for the family, for the workplace, and we begin to use techniques that actually help us activate that coherent communication, that help us shift and lift each other's vibes. We can do that and see what outcomes we create together that can be not only harmonious, but solve a lot of miscommunications and a lot of social problems. It's worth playing with. Social coherence enables a collective heart intelligence that helps raise the vibratory rate of the individuals and the group's energetic field. Social coherence is happening more and more. As groups of people make efforts to collectively open their hearts, put aside negative attitudes and judgments of others, to work cooperatively for the benefit of the whole, it adds to a momentum of positive change, which is what will help society to reshape itself. You contribute to creating more social coherence with each act of kindness you show to others or to yourself. You often do it informally without knowing it, simply through the positive ways you show up and lead your life. You do it through the heart qualities that radiate through your heart's electromagnetic field into the environment. As more of us cultivate a positive energetic field of the heart within and around us, in our families, workplaces, communities, and world, we regenerate our life and others physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We're going to experience one more heart math technique called the heart lock-in technique designed to help amplify the power of your heart qualities and intentions and the radiation from your heart's energetic field. Oops. Close your eyes and ease into your heart. Focus your attention in the area of the heart. Okay, so yeah, they were just going to get into the exercise that we just did. So I didn't think we'd do it again. <laughs> um, so I guess I just want to, I wanted to leave off of something and it just, it went, it went away. <laughs> um, well, I guess I would just like to leave off, first of all, Thank you for having me on here. And um, well, I think we're going to do a Q&A. But I also want to say that um, everything that's that's going on right now, I think that uh, one way or another, we've been through this before. Um, and I, it's kind of hard for me to explain that. But at, at some point in our life, we've all gone through some kind of struggle. And we've made it through it. And um, this is just a larger scale, but um, on a 3D aspect, it, it seems very overwhelming. But on a personal level, I mean, we've all we've all been through these types of feelings and and thoughts and behaviors and stuff. And um, we are gonna we are gonna make it through all of this. And and I, I know that a lot of you are aware of that. But anybody who's not and is kind of on the fence i would i would just say don't worry because um <laughs> there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel i've been re reassured of that over and over again and i have fallen into the spot where i didn't trust what i was i didn't trust the information i was getting um because it just seemed like it was taking too long but the thing the information i've been getting recently has just been patience, 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 
not to worry, patience. And that's been the message that I've been um, experiencing lately. So again, thank you all. And uh, Phil, do you want to take it from here? Sure, Tom, you did a fantastic job. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know. There's so much to unpack there. Uh, I have a whole bunch of notes uh, since since the start of uh, of you talking, and uh, we we talked a little bit earlier about okay, let's we're gonna do this, then we're gonna do that, and you're like, yeah, let's we'll kind of go with the flow. And uh, wow, that was a wonderful flow. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we do have one hand, a couple hands popping up. Uh, yeah. So if you would like to ask Tom a question, please. Uh, use your uh, virtual hand so we can get you into queue. Um, you have some wonderful, wonderful words of thanks in the chat th for you there, Tom. Everyone is uh, really uh, picking up what you're laying down for sure. Um, so many wonderful things. So many wonderful things uh, you were saying there. Um, obviously, one of the things that uh, is threaded through all of us is, you know, having to get out of our heads and into our heart, especially when with, with all this information around us, how do we discern from that? And, you know, breathing, heart breathing is something that is a huge, huge tool, uh, that we can use like you were describing in any situation for as long as we need to, to get back in alignment uh, to where we really need to be raising that vibration. Um, I'll stop ranting for a second and, and get, we'll get to some of these questions because um, I'm sure there's, there's going to be a lot of them yet. And another one's popping up. So we have uh, Michelle uh, on, uh, that's going to lead us off here. Hello, Michelle. Uh, good evening. Um, uh, Tom, um, yeah, your story from the beginning uh, reminds me of our gathering from last week or two weeks ago, uh, the dark side of the soul. Um, but um, a few years ago, I was I read an article that we have uh, two hearts exactly. Um, so the one that you are telling us to breathe in is that the one that's here, or is that our really physical heart? Uh, it's the heart center. So basically, I mean, your heart has this. Uh like 40,000 neural connectors. So it is the beating heart is one thing, but it's all, it's all connected, right? So your heart actually thinks and sends information to your mind or brain. And it actually connects, it, it, it sends a lot more information than the, the mind will send to it. So it's actually our, like we say, it's our, our center, but yes. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent question. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, next up, we have uh, Deb and Koji. Thanks, Phil. Hey, Tom. Thank you. That was really lovely. Um, and, it, and it brought to mind, for me, the first time I heard about heart math was around 2013 when I came across a film called I Am uh, by Tom Shadiak. Mm. And I remember a scene in that that really well, a couple of scenes that really struck me. Um, one was that somehow uh, you say that the, you know, the, the electricity, the, the, the message sent out by the heart, it goes out about three feet. And I remember this one scene where he was sitting with these gentlemen from the Heart Math Institute. And there was a dish of uh, like raw yogurt in front of him and they had some sort of a gauge in there. Mm. And they told him to think about something that generated a really powerful emotion in him. And the gauge on that yogurt actually, you know, went really high. Mm -hmm. Just as another, just, it was just like live bacteria mm -hmm. was affected by being within that three, three foot range of, of his emotion. And um, that was just really powerful. And, and so I just wanted to say thank you for reminding me of that and also recommending for anybody if they haven't seen Tom Shadiak's I Am, it's absolutely spectacular. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Well, actually, I, I heard of a, or I read in a book, it is a book, I don't remember the author, it's called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. 
and um, <clears throat> they actually did some tests. Uh, I'm not sure the exact test, but basically it would register frequencies and they would use it to test um, radio towers for frequencies. So these scientists brought it into um, brought it into a study where people were actually passing and there was a lady who turned her consciousness towards prayer and was like saying to forgive everybody that she ever hated and all these things. And the, the test just started going off the chart. I think it was like 500 where a radio station's like 30. And there was another test where a guy was dying and he was very negative and grumpy and it just went like 500 the opposite way. <laughs> so the power of prayer was actually you know, shown in the physical as well. It was pretty cool. Uh, amazing. Thank you so much, Tom. Yes, there's so many uh, ex uh, experiments and studies that have gone on when we're talking about just the power of intention, whether it's prayer or even words, just the power of positivity and everything that has a, that is high vibration compared to lower vibrational frequencies. Like it's just, there's so many out there to really emphasize. Yeah, there is science backing this. Yeah, there is uh, the spiritual piece backing in it. Uh, we can, we can get behind this too. Uh, if we all gather together and really, really uh, focus on those true intentions, but Cindy, you have your hand up. Yes. Thank you, Tom, for being your authentic you. you I love what you said. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to know, um, with race, when people are in the 5D, this is something that I like to do when I'm in the 5D, is I, I like to look at the sun, and I will have the sun, um, it will go purple, and then I'll put more love, and I will do green, and then I will have it go all the way through my small town, and I'll be walking by and just smiling and I can, I'm generating that love going around the town. I'm wondering if we all as a group could do that in our own sort, sort or in our own areas and help to put that grid work of love throughout our own towns. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that is the, uh when they talk about global coherence um there was a there was a again another test i'm sorry to bring it up but just to, just to some proof um they they tested the uh magnetic field of planet earth and they were showing the graph of it and actually one of the examples was with um when 9 11 happened the amount of heartfelt emotion and how it affected the entire planet um it just it went off the charts at that moment because there was just so much heartfelt emotions happening at that time all over the world um so yes and, and when you were actually saying that i felt that within my core um so i you know i i believe in that a hundred percent and um i think if everybody would see the the big thing about uh about all of this is, is the selflessness. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to go volunteer at the food bank or whatever, but um, with our intention and our energy, we can be selfless. And um, I've learned over time that selfishness actually does that disconnect, like a lot of those low vibrational things do. The selfishness is um, very apparent. And when I get into what do I need, what do I want, what do I, 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 that state of mind, I feel so disconnected. So um, to be able to do something like that, Cindy, um, when I feel like I'm falling into that ego construct of, of me, 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 to actually do something like that would be absolutely amazing. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, Sylvie, you uh, would like to ask a question. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, I was wondering if you had any extra information about people who have pacemakers uh, from the Heart Math Institute perspective, as well as for anybody else who may have perspective. 
Uh, I had to get a pacemaker when I was 44 because my pulse was down to 38. So they said it was an electrical problem. So it's never been a problem. But when I became aware of the 5G towers last year, I asked the pacemaker people, they said there wasn't going to be an issue. And I, of course, said the intention, the intention that there isn't. But sometimes I have little questions in my mind in terms of energy and what a pacemaker uh, is, how it's going to be affected or whatever. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, there is a lot of information on the website. I, I haven't come by that specific um, question before, so I, I don't want to mislead you. Um, but I, I definitely think that, you know, these techniques would be beneficial, you know, pacemaker, or no pacemaker for sure. Um, but I, I don't, I don't want to say that I know something that I don't. So I'll just um, let you do your research on that website if you'd like to. <laughs> okay, thanks. No problem. Sorry about that. Does anybody uh, else uh, by, have any insights on that? Maybe In terms please. of 5G and stuff, uh, five, yeah, um, yeah, the 5G towers? Uh, that would be, that's an excellent question. If anyone has any ideas, uh, please, you can uh, throw it into the chat and then uh, we can then then save the chat and then we can have that and you can have that information to share uh, a little later on. But that's a excellent point. Thank you so much, Sylvie, for bringing that up. And hopefully we can, we can get uh, an answer. If maybe not, we can post it into uh, one of our groups there on the website that I think, and then maybe source it out for others uh, to inquire. I think that'd be great. Thank you so much, Sylvie. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. Next up we have, uh, mean that w would like to come in and ask Tom a question. Uh, welcome mean. Um, hi Tom. Hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for your um, authenticity and your share. Um, I read a long time ago, um, I knew about this, uh, hard coherence and there are people in my life that don't understand. So this was very good at that time and I saw the scientific proof. So people would love just live on logic. So it was good that I could give them this mm -hmm. info. And then in one of the uh, uh, articles or, or uh, I think it was on Facebook, I'm not on Facebook now, uh, this was a person who um, would just sit in a restaurant and if somebody would be fighting, it would start to start to do with uh, breathing and they would calm down. Okay, mm -hmm. so that was really um, uh, eye opener for me. I know there was some invisible, invisible force and the purest intention towards that, that was working. So I said, okay, I kept that in mind. And one day I was just uh, sitting on the lakeshore with my coffee and I heard a couple fighting at the uh, back. So I just turned around and I, the girl was crying and I was, um, and suddenly I remember that because uh, I felt that, that the guy wasn't being, so I didn't want it to be judgmental because that was their problem. So I just listened and I just said, I said, girl, just calm down, you know, like that. And I just sending that vibes to them, good. And I forgot about it because I, I heard them stop. I said, then I saw them, they were going away. Then for like another 10 minutes, I saw that girl, because when you're sitting on, on, on Lakeshore, it's just water and down the rocks. So there was a, a passageway just enough that a person could walk. I mean, the girl came around in front of me, just not even uh, at the back. And I, I just moved back so that she could walk, but she, she just stood right in front of me and she looked at me and I looked at her. I didn't say nothing. She didn't say nothing. I just opened up my arms like that and she came in, in my arms. And for some time, I just kept her like that and she didn't say nothing, I didn't say nothing. And she just, uh, she there nodded her head, I did, and and uh, she left. Then I saw her on the bus stop and we waved and that's it. So I know I understood a little bit of it, what happened, but I know from, from you uh, what actually was happening there at that time. Um, I understood that the guy did that and how he did that, I don't know. I did it from my own accord, like how I felt at that time, because I have come from that physical abuse. So I know that I was feeling, feeling that uh, for that girl. So um, could you please a little bit explain that? Because I know if it, this worked, I 
still can use this on anybody that I feel because my intuition is strong and I, I can help them in this manner, in any manner. Yeah, I mean, I, I use it with my kids all the time because <clears throat> um, like if they're, if they're having a tantrum and I go in with anger or anything like that, it just escalates things. And, um, but yeah, if I, if I take a minute to get coherent, it actually, I don't really, I don't have to say anything. And if I do, it's coming from a place of love rather than anger, right? So absolutely. I mean, if we can, we will affect people around us. It's like, I don't know if you've ever met those people. You just like, when you're in their presence, you feel better and they're just, they're just totally aligned and vice versa. You meet that person where you're just like, I, I don't like that guy. And you don't know why, but you just, you just don't like it. <laughs> and, and that's, that's just what, what we're dealing with. Right. And so you know, in, a way, in a way, it is the same uh, science that is involved. If you want to say it, if you want to explain it to somebody, uh, mm -hmm. because if I want to teach that to my kids, mm -hmm. so they are old enough, okay, one is married. But, but the fact that if I am sitting with them, they are, you know, millennium kids. So I need to show them, tell them in the scientific manner because they know me as a person who I am, but I want to teach them or if there is any of my nieces are there, if I want to tell them, about science so what what i would say to them is that it'll <clears throat> it'll help them function better you know they can be more productive things like that um you know because everybody wants to be more productive everybody wants to to feel better and you know things like that so if you need um because like these videos are for practitioners i'm not sure what's open to the public they might be open to the public on the website but if you can't find anything, you can reach out to me. And if you need, if you need the uh, the videos to show them, I mean, it's it's pretty hard to argue that um, from the videos that uh, you know they're not because they have a short span of time. I mean, they can have the video; it will be in their bookmarks. So if I just straight away tell them in <laughs> two, three sentences that yeah. it does work, so maybe I think it's same thing as our electromagnetic field has that. Uh, uh, information and my love is that information going through me to you as Person. long as you are so is it like anybody that is open to it they will only get it or anybody can get, can feel it no it, 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 people will sense it for sure yeah okay um whether or not it depends what's in the way really you know um, but if you send it with love and, you know, yeah. put it out there. but as we know, um, we have the ability of self-will and that, and that can do whatever it yes. wants. Okay. So. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mia, for that question. Thank you, Tom, uh, for that insightful answer. Uh, next up we have Raymond. Thank you. Um, very interesting journey, Tom. Um, in a way, you kind of like uh, <clears throat> sort of remind, uh, reminded me of some experience where I walked into a room full of people and actually silenced them. And I thought that my mind was doing it. Yeah. I think it, it was the heart. Mm -hmm. So um, to learn the techniques about this, uh, do we go to your site and also this inner balance um, thing on the uh, heart math site, is that really necessary? The inner balance, like the technology? No, to acquire the ability to home in on your heart field and uh, do the meditation. Is it necessary to do it? No, is it necessary to have these um, apparatuses like this uh, Bluetooth connection device no. uh, for sensory heart and all of that stuff? No, and it's it really um, a lot of uh, a lot of well, most of society is obsessed with technology, and it's just a uh, a bit more motivating when people can actually physically see the the change within them. Um, 
that's basically the purpose of the technology. People that are open, people that are open and are can actually feel it as they do it. They don't. I mean, the the proof's in the experience. Yes, I want to home in on on the techniques because I think that um, is one of the things that have been missing. Mm, okay. Yeah, just um, I have uh, on my website. I'm actually I'm in the middle of creating a new website, but that's okay. My old one's still up, but it will have a lot more heart math information. But for the time being, there's a section on the website for CC members. Just email me. Um, let me know you're a, a member from the collective consciousness, and then and then uh, I can get you uh, whatever you need there. So. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Tom is right. It is on his website. It's actually right on the front page. Uh, it, if you scroll down a little bit, uh, he, he's created a little button that if you are a CC member, just click here and to contact Tom. And uh, like he said, uh, he'll connect with you and uh, in any way that, that you would like. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Tom, uh, for taking the time and energy tonight. It's been absolutely amazing to raise the vibration, to teach some techniques, to heal, to he uh, listen and to hear about your journey uh, of, of the dark night of the soul and your healing process and your continued healing process and some of the ways that you're helping others heal, whether it's your family members or, or, any, or anyone else seeking uh, a better way of managing uh, their life and getting control of uh, some of the things that they feel uncontrol of um, and having that allowance. And like you were saying earlier, that patience, 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 just to slow down just a little bit. Uh, I like what you just said uh, a little, not too long ago saying, take, just take a moment for yourself, take a minute to become coherent. Just take it, just take a second, do that breath work. Um, it, it's, it's funny because like you're saying earlier, it seems so silly. It seems so easy. Uh, I'm a child and youth worker by trade. And one of those techniques that we did for, for kids was just breathing and just stopping and just taking uh, simple breaths when we're getting really, really agitated or really frustrated. And we might not know why, where those frustrations or agitations are coming from, but we can do something positive about it. And the, that breath work is super, super important to bring us back into alignment, to bring us back into coherent coherence. Uh, so we can really raise our vibration, not just within ourselves, but then like you were talking about outwardly through that heart center, uh, super, uh, super important and super amazing that we all are here uh, as connecting consciousness, uh, doing just that, connecting um, uh, together energetically like this, creating that sacred container. Um, very, very thankful uh, for you uh, coming on and, and describing some of that and putting, uh, holding that light with us tonight. Thank you so much, Tom. And thank you to everyone. Thank you to our new members uh, coming out tonight. Uh, really, really appreciate you. Um, we will be back here tomorrow evening uh, once again with Elena Danon uh, for another interview night. Uh, this was this is Believe the Unbelievable as uh, Elena has a wonderful, wonderful story to tell. Uh, and we're going to share that with you tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, thank you everyone so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Please, please be kind to yourself, forgive yourself and love others unconditionally. I will, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll see you all next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.